نحمده سبحانه ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير اللهم اقسم لنا من خشيتك ما تحول به بيننا وبين معصيتك ومن طاعتك ما تبلغنا به جنتك ومن اليقين ما تهول به علينا مصائب الدنيا ومتعنا اللهم بأسماعنا وأبصارنا وقواتنا ما أحييتنا اللهم واجعله الوارث منا واجعل ثأرنا على من ظلمنا وانصرنا اللهم على من عادانا اللهم ولا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا اللهم ولا تسلق علينا بذنوبنا من لا يخافك ولا يرحمنا يا رب العالمين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم إن زلزلة الساعة شيء عظيم يوم ترونها تذهل كل مرضعة عما أرضعت وتضع كل ذات حمل حملها وترى الناس سكارى وما هم بسكارى ولكن عذاب الله شديد وأصلي وأسلم على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين سيدنا محمد بن عبد الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه وعنا معهم إلى يوم الدين أما بعد رسبكت البدر السيسة السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most compassionate, the most merciful, all praise and thanks are due to him, and peace and blessings be upon his beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He who is guided by the will of Allah, no one can misguide him. And he who is misguided, no one can guide him except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. Today's khutbah will be under the title of Don't leave Ramadan until you reorder your priorities. Iyaka an tughadar Ramadan qabla an tu'eeda tartib awlawiyyatik. Be careful not to let Ramadan pass. You finish Ramadan without taking a decision how to reorder, to put things in the right order. You have priorities, less priorities, marginal things, important things. I believe personally, from my experience of teaching, talking, making da'wah, preaching, the vast majority of Muslims, they have a serious problem in terms of they know, they understand, but they can't. Many of us, we know that this is right and this is wrong. Minority of us, they don't know. The majority, they know, but they can't, for many reasons. On top of them, al-'ada. <laughs> Just we used to. <laughs> this is what we used to do. <laughs> Many of us, maybe they don't pray the five times as Jama'ah. Some of us, they don't pray the Fajr at the Masjid. Some of us, they can't control themselves in doing many things which are wrong or pushing themselves to do some obligatory things. But nevertheless, in general, we have a problem in how to design or how we are already have designed our lives. Now, I think you agree me if we said that one of the amazing aspects of Ramadan is that it is the month of revolution against our habits and our, you know, uh, everything that we used to. It breaks the system. It breaks the ties with everything we are stuck with. It breaks the system of my food, the system when I sleep, the system of my, sitting with my friends, the system of drinking. A coffee, the system of having a cigarette if I'm smoking, the cigarette, everything is broken, everything. So, by the end of 30 days, simple message. Have you been able to do it? Yes, so you can. <laughs> this is a simple message of Ramadan. So it breaks everything. So therefore, but now from this amazing benefit of Ramadan, I want to focus on one thing, which is, I'll repeat the title. Don't leave Ramadan before taking a decision how to reorder your priorities. To fix the meaning, as always, I love to use stories. This story is one of the golden examples that I love. And I'm using it maybe, maybe in tens of places where I travel around the world. Simple story, and it will be the core where I will build, bismillah, the concept on it. Now, the core point of the story, it is said that Philosophy professor, 
in America came to the class. Now, look, philosophy professor, which means he teaches what? Philosophy. <laughs> so, amazingly, and out of the norm, when he came, he was planning to make a shift in the way of thinking for his students. So I prepared something like a surprise. So when he came, there was like a big mayonnaise jar on the top of the desk. No one knew why this big mayonnaise jar was on the desk. So when he came, he surprised them by some certain things. In the drawer, he has some kind of plastic bags, contains some certain things. Look how clever this professor was. He pulled, he pulled from the drawer a plastic bag contains golf balls. He shoved the golf balls into the big mayonnaise jar and they filled the jar. He asked the, the students, is it full? All of them, they said what? Yes, it's full. Then he pulled another plastic bag which contains the pebbles, small stones, which is more or less tenth of the size of the golf balls. He showered the pebbles, eventually the pebbles, they filled the spaces and the gaps between the golf balls. Then he said, is it full? Hundreds of students. They said, yes, it's full. He pulled the third plastic bag contains sand. He showered the sand, the sand filled the gaps between the pebbles and the golf balls. Is it full? All of them, they said, yes, it's full. Then he brought two cups of coffee, liquid. So he put the, <laughs> is it full? Yes, 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 well, why it's full? What are you trying to tell us? He said, look, it seems he was a religious person. Maybe he was a Christian, an American professor. I don't know what, it seems he was religious because the example has to do with religion. He said, look, now let's start with the wisdom from the story. He said, this jar represents your life. The golf balls represent the most important things in your life. If you filled your life with golf balls first, such as golf balls like, he said, God, your health, your family. The pebbles, they represent the things that matter, but not the very important, such as your work, the place of your work, your house, is it a house or an apartment, a new made car or an old car relatively? Okay, they do matter, but if I don't have health, it's a disaster. <laughs> but if I have, for example, a, a 2016 car, it, it's not that big deal like 22 car. I can manage, I can live, I have no problem. So things that do matter, but not like the first, such as the insurance company that I'm dealing with, the car, the house, the furniture, blah, 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 etc. Then, here come to the most important thing of the story. What about the sand? He said the sand represents everything else. The silly stuff in your life. Everything else. All marginal things. Your hairdo, your jacket, furniture, the color of your car, the year of the make of your car, and name it. Tens, hundreds, millions of things. Whether they do exist in your life or they do not, it's not a big matter. So, so what if my car, it was, for example, if, my, if I have a long hair or a short hair, what's the big deal? If I have a red car or a blue car, so what's the big deal? If I have, for example, Mercedes or I have a Ferrari, I think, okay, psychologically, maybe my desire, etc., what I did, it's a car. Whether I have a Hyundai or Mercedes or Kia, at the end I have a car that I can move from a place to a place. He said everything else. Here comes the surprise. He said, look now, please, quotes. I quote, he said, if you filled your jar, i.e. your life, with sand first, you can't add anything else. You must start with golf balls. Because the sand, no spaces. You can't add a golf ball if the jar is full of sand. So this was the morale, or the, 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 you know, the wisdom behind the story. Now, Islamic, and then, of course, just to, 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 to quote the, let's say, the story in full, one of the students, he said, but you have not told us about what the two cups of coffee <laughs> represent. He said, I thought that definitely someone will ask me this question. Actually, it's just to tell you, no matter how busy you are, still you can have 
a time to drink a cup of coffee with a friend. Which means, hey, يعني بعديها بقى يا شيخ as the old Egyptian brother says. Yeah, you can find a place with your friends, okay? So you are not completely busy. It's like a job at the end. But my point is, let's Islamize the story now, okay? In our terminology, which is completely true. If sand is full first, you can't add golf balls. Golf balls to us, what are these? In our terminology, in our standard, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your deen, your reputation, your heart, your family, your parents, your health. That's why, for example, you know, it's not something easy. The reputation of you, sister, of you, brother, for example, for us, boyfriend, girlfriend, it's, it has a high priority in Islam. That's why we are not allowed to have a boyfriend or girlfriend. If the reputation is broken in Islam, we are lost. It has a priority for us. We don't drink alcohol because this will affect my the power of intellect, which is the core point that makes me a human being. So and it affects my health, it affects my personality, it affects my so it's the deen, Allah, priorities as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants, my reputation, my family, my parents, they are the golf balls. If they are there, no problem. Now the pebbles and the sand, we might share the same examples. Yes? Really, is it a big deal? By the way, Sheikh, for example, forget your situation here in Canada. Let's go to the Arab world now. If I pass the way, many people they say, uh, Sheikh or doctor, can we uh, use riba to buy houses, for example? And in many Arab countries, you can rent a house for a very cheap price. It's not like this country. Uh, one of my answers I say, to the best of my knowledge, I don't know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, if you pass away while you, are, you have a, a house and you are a tenant and you rent a house, you will go to the hellfire. It's not haram to be a tenant. <laughs> so it's not a problem to leave the dunya if you are a tenant and you have rented a house. Okay? <laughs> so, so what, Yadi? But you know, I have to buy a house. What if, if I passed away without owning the house? What's the big problem, for example? But what if I passed away and I go to pray? What if I passed away and I did not buy a car? I suffered a lot. I was using public transportation. Yes, it was a difficulty for me. Yes, it took a lot of, a lot of, and maybe it helped to maintain my health because I was walking. But I suffered a lot. But I passed away without owning a car. Is it a problem when I stand before my Lord? No. But if I passed away and I did not pay any effort to take care of my children, I was not sitting with them, for example. I was not directing them. What could happen to me when I stand before my lords? A disaster that could happen. So we come here, respected brothers and sisters, and allow me now just to go to the Arabic language now, okay? <laughs> now the share of our respected brothers. Now, مَوْضُعُنَا يَا أَحِبَّةً يا إخوة يا أخوات باختصار هو ضرورة إعادة ترتيب الأولويات من خلال رمضان إياي إياك إياك إيانا جميعا نخرج من رمضان دون أن نعيد ترتيب الأولويات قلت لأهمية الترتيب خاصة أن رمضان هو شهر الثورة شهر الثورة على العادات شهر الثورة على التقاليد يكسر ويحطن ويدمر ارتباطي بكل شيء أرغب بتركه ولا أستطيع أما وأن الله قد أكرمني وأوجب علي وألزمني وتدربت على أن أخرج من نمط العبودية لما لا أستطيع تركه فقد أعطاني هدية نقطة لا كنت أقول أن كثيرا منا يعلم أن هناك أمور خاطئة في حياته ويحب أن يتركها لكنه لا يستطيع واحدة من طرق التي تساعد على تغيير نمط الحياة هي قوة القناعة قوة المثال قوة الاعتقاد مع المعلومة لذلك أتيت المثال البسيط خلاصة المثال أن أستاذا مدرسا للفلسفة في أحد Maybe if you can let him drink the water no problem Maybe he's أستاذ مختص في الفلسفة في أحد الجامعات الأمريكية جاء بمرطبان زجاجي كبير ووضعه أمام الطلبة وخبأ في داخل الأدراج بعض الأكياس التي تحتوي بعض الأمور ففجأ الطلبة وأراد أن يغير مفهومهم تجاه شيء مهم جدا في الحياة موضوع الأولويات فأحضر كيسا فيه طابات الجولف 
وحجمها كما الذي تعرفون فوضع طابات الجولف في داخل المرطبات فامتلا فسال الطلبه هل هو ممتلا قالوا نعم ثم اخرج من داخل الدرج كيسا فيه حجاره صغيره يعادل حجمها تقريبا عشر حجم طابات الجولف فوضعها في الداخل فدخلت في الفراغات التي بين الطابات فسال الطلبه مره اخرى هل هو ممتلا فقالوا نعم ثم احضر كيسا فيه رمل فوضع الرمال فامتلات الرمال في الفراغات التي بين الحجاره والكرات فسال المره الثالثه هل امتلا هل هو ممتلئ قالوا نعم وكل ما اخذ الجميع يضحكون طب ما الرساله التي تريد ان توصلها فقال لهم هذا المرطبان يمثل حياتك طابات الجولف تمثل الامور الاكثر اهميه في حياتك مثل الله سبحانه وتعالى الدين الصحه العائله بينما الحجاره متوسطه الحجم تمثل الاشياء المهمه لكنها ليست بالاولويات الكبرى ثم قال والرمل يمثل الاشياء الهامشيه جدا في حياتك فقال العبارات عبارته القويه قال لو انك ملأت مرطبان حياتك الذي يمثل حياتك بالرمل اولا فلن تتمكن من اضافه اي شيء اخر. Now we continue to so he said if you filled your life with sand first you can't add anything. So coming to this point Let's come to the core point of the khutbah. How many of us, respected brothers and sisters, in practice, we are facing a serious problem in terms of our priorities? Let's, for this example, let's make benefit of the month of Ramadan. Now, in the month of Ramadan, if you remember, in different khutbah and in many hadith, in many, you know, uh, khatira, we said the following, at least my definition for Ramadan, I said دورة إنقاذ إلهية سنوية إجبارية تعينني على أن أتخرج من هذا الشهر بشهادة مختوم عليها قد عرفت فلزا It's a yearly compulsory divine training course We are, it's a compulsory, it's an obligation, we have to go through it Now, through it some of us, we are not used to Salat al-Jama'ah. Okay, now you have a new system. You became aware what does it mean to come to the masjid. Some people there don't know. Or they are not giving the real value. They are not putting as part of their priorities because they don't want the taste. You have come to the masjid in Ramadan. Some people still, they don't know how to taste the beauty of listening to the word of Allah in the Fajr prayer. They did because of Ramadan. So I have. Some of us, some of us. Now let's come to our daily life practices. I put some of the examples here. Now, how many of us, they don't care to the source of their money? Because khalas, you know, this is what we used to, Ya Sheikh. What can I do? I'm not the first one. <laughs> source of my money. Third example. How many of us, we do, for example, give priority for the furniture of our houses. Some people, they renew the furniture of their house every second year. For a new, they're brand new car every year with a difference of paying maybe 10 or 15,000. The car costs, let's say, 70,000 to 19. 20, 2020, another new car. He pays the car. Many of us, they might be doing. How many of us, part of their system as a priority, sitting with their Friends, on daily basis, the priority is not for their kids, not for their wives, not for themselves. How many of us, on daily basis, they spend hours on the, what? Uh, the internet, social media, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, all of these things, you know, all the time. Hours, it's part of my life, I can't. And by the way, this is one of the new, you know, addiction, you know, it's exactly like the drugs, medical speaking, exactly. It affects the same area in the brain, exactly. It's a disease, it's an addiction. Five hours a day. Some of us sit with the friends, maybe drinking alcohol, smoking, chatting, websites, the source of money, changing the furniture, the money, the time of how do I spend my time. Now, how to reorder my prior priorities. Please, my message is, in the last five minutes, is just to pay your attention, this is the proper time to start thinking what are the less priority things in your life, even with good intention, you were not paying attention. Please, try to look, like to review them, try to reorder the priorities. If you know them, Ramadan will give you the push. 
If you don't know, please, the duty of someone like myself to pay your attention so that you will be able to know. Now, your wife has the priority before your friends. Your kids have a priority over your friends. I'm not saying sitting with the friends is haram. But I'm saying it is a disaster if I sit with my friends every day, two to three hours, and I do not see my kids just when they go to sleep. Assalamu habibi. And maybe I read the surah, uh, I can put on him, just a kiss on his forehead, and that's it. Do I chat? Do I sit? Do I listen? Do I spend time? And I'm talking about the quality time. I'm not talking about the time of just driving the car, giving him a lift while I'm making my telephone calls all the time. Okay, 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 okay see you. Okay, no, 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 all the time. I'm not with my kids. Okay, I with my kids, I sit five hours a day. What do you do, Chef? We watch TV. You are not sitting with your kids. <laughs> Both of you, you are slaves for the TV. <laughs> It's not sitting with your kids. I'm talking about the quality time where my eyes, my mind, my heart, my feelings are completely for my son and my daughter. The quality time, I enjoy time. I express the, you know, the compassion and the love with them. Is this a priority in my life? Some people, they say, Sheikh, you are exaggerating. But wallahi, I'm not exaggerating. This is a problem in our society. This is a serious problem. We do have justifications. Maybe, you know, I need I, to work, but wait. How many works do you work? Wallahi, two, Sheikh. How much do you earn? $10,000. You are about to become a millionaire. Please, delete one of them and spend time with your kids. In a few years, you will be begging, begging his foot, not his hand, just to listen to you. Now, he's begging you. He would love to sit with you. This is a priority. This is a priority. Otherwise, you should not have you know, decided to be a father. <laughs> it's not just, okay, I want to have it, it's a priority. My deen, my relation, my ilm, respected brothers and sisters, do I spend the time as a priority to know something about Allah, about the religion, about myself, about my akhirah? How much do we spend apart from Ramadan? Is it part of my, my priority? My kids, many people, they do spend their, for example, time, they send their kids to have music. Horse riding, swimming, alongside Sayyid Muhammad, skating, huh? for example, I'm sorry, I'm not from Canada, so I don't know the sports, so, uh, it, it, skating, or any kind of sports, sometimes we give them left and we pay hundreds of them, them, but how much do I pay to teach them Arabic, pay, pay, not just send them to the masjid, Allah, let the masjid take care of them, how much do I pay? I bring special tutoring, special teachers to teach them French, for example. Do I pay a penny for them to teach them Arabic, the language of the Quran? I need to review the order of my priorities. I'm not talking about haram and halal. I'm talking about priorities. But at the end, you can do all of these things. Go and enjoy. Have a picnic. Enjoy the time with your friends. But get real values for the things as Allah would love you to do a pull of all the other was the room of the other room for 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 the other we have in Arabic something like إذا حبت رياحك فاغتنمها If the suitable time comes, make benefit of it because it's not always the case that you have a golden opportunity. Maybe some, maybe Allah has pushed someone like myself or anyone, forget my face, forget my name now. Just consider me a servant, which is the truth. I'm a servant for the religion of Allah. Someone is reminding you. Maybe next month you will find no one to remind you. You will go again to the machine of materialism outside. It will, you know, it will demolish you. <laughs> so be careful. Someone is reminding you now. Don't leave before thinking. And the best, don't leave before taking a decision. If, if the idea is clear, take a decision. Because from my experience, the majority of people, their biggest problem, not the convictions. 
and not the knowledge. They know and they are convinced, but they can't last. They need someone for the first push, the kickoff. They need someone just to get this. The majority, I'm not the of them. Some people they don't know. Some people they are not aware. Some people still they something. But the majority of us, including myself, in many cases we know. It's like those who smoke. Don't you agree with me that thousands of doctors in hospitals they smoke? Do you think there are a group of people on earth, they know what is the bad effect of smoking more than doctors? <laughs> Especially those who do surgeries. They open the chest, they see the cancer by their own naked eyes inside. And they put the people, and the people they pass away in their hands because of cancer of lungs, cancer of the mug, cancer of the, sorry, the, 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 the gum. And you know, amazingly, you see, yet they smoke. Do you think they are not convinced? Wallahi, they are convinced. They don't know? Possibly, they know. What's the problem? They are not able to leave it. <laughs> they get used just an adam. Oh, an adam. So Ramadan, that's why I started telling you, Ramadan is a revolutionary month. It's a divine revolutionary gift. Hadiyya min Allah. Shahr al-Thawra ala al-Adat. It breaks everything you are used to. It cuts the ties and Allah makes something what we say in the language of Usul al Fiqh or in the language of Islamic thought, Iqamatul Hujja, establishing the argument. Okay, you have done it, you can do it, go and continue the right way. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Yarzukani wa iyakum. Husna tatbiqi lima yarzukun Allah wa min al fahm. Allahumma fadala wa hamna wa afina wa afuana. Allahumma hina fawf al ardi wa tahta. Allahumma hamna fawf al ardi wa tahta al ardi wa yom al ardi alayk ya kareem. Allahumma jalna hudat al mahdiyin la dalin wa la mudlin ya rabb al alamin. Allahumma anta rabbi la ilaha illa anta khalaqtani. Wa ana abduk wa ana ala ahdika wa wa'dika ma istata'at. A'udh bika min shari ma sana'at. أبوء لك بنعمتك علي وأبوء بذنبي فاغفر لي فإنه لا يغفر الذنوب إلا أنت اللهم إنا عبيدك أبناء عبيدك أبناء إمائك نواصينا بيدك ماض فينا حكمك عدل فينا قضاءك نسألك بكل اسم هو لك سميت به نفسك أو أنزلته في كتابك أو علمته أحدا من خلقك أو استأثرت به في علم الغيب عندك أن تجعل القرآن العظيم ربيع قلوبنا وجلاء أحزاننا وذهاب همومنا وغمومنا يا رب العالمين اللهم عنا على صيام رمضان وقيام لياليه اللهم أخرجنا من رمضان وقد غفرت ذنوبنا وتجاوزت عن خطايانا يا رب العالمين اللهم ارحم والدينا ووالد والدينا وأصحاب الحقوق والواجبات علينا يا رب العالمين إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء إلى القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون وأقم الصلاة Thank you.